another meeting tonight. I'm going to be in conflict of interest. Well, you're going to be for regarding Which, a Taylor Street um, daycare. Oh, you know you're right. You're you're close enough, Lee, that. Uh, Uh, it may be that the requirement to get this done, we'll have to see how, how soon we have to move on this, whether it can wait until the next meeting. But but you're right. You're also going to be in conflict when it comes to your, your uh, I think, your food service permit. Oh, all right. Oh. Okay, so well, let's. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay, let's start with the meeting minutes for November 21st, 2023. Are you okay with those, Lee? Yes, yes, thank you. Colleen, I am too, so that's that's approved. Okay. What we maybe can do is, is quickly go through the, the septic systems. I've got uh, one that from Bobby, one from Neil Jackson, in fact, two from Neil Jackson. Um, and then we've got the one from Bob Stover on Lyon Street is not, no one's come in yet on that. Uh, Peter LaBarbera has not come in with his changes. So first three, we might be able to do something with. The one from Bob Sheehan, pretty simple. It's it is it's already been approved. Lot one G of Maximilian Drive. It's right at the end of Maximilian Drive. This new construction, four bedroom house, complete system. Uh, it's a a modification that's put in. It's moved from four bedroom three bedrooms to four bedrooms. Everything else other than lifting the system up to get the slope the maximum of uh, the bottom five feet up. It moves up about a twentieth of an inch. Uh, it is a, it's a, it was a wooded lot with deep sands and gravel, no groundwater to 118 inches, wetlands to the northwest, no other issues. That everything was approvedly. Uh, the difference is that he moved from from uh, three three foot trenches by 12 inches effective depth that were 40 feet long, to we moved it to 50 feet long for three trenches. That's the only. Differences. Uh, so he moved from requirement of 550 gallons a day to 555 gallons a day. He's still five feet from from the groundwater. Doesn't need ballast. Uh, all that was required before is is a trench permit. The question question that I had, Lee, that we should at least discuss. He, the Allen put in a, a and the the old system was approved I think I think it was in June. And uh if Alan did supply another two hundred dollar permit fee for the change from from three bedrooms to four bedrooms. Uh I typically if we do a permit modification, if we ask the if someone asks to move a leach field or you know something, they make minor changes. We typically don't ask for another permit fee. We just yeah, I wasn't sure on that. The modifications. What are your thoughts, Lee? Well, first, uh, uh, are you going to do you support the change? Oh, ab yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, Colleen. So we approve that. Okay. So this is a. Um, this is gravity yep. system, so the 50 foot does not uh, come into any type of a venting issue, correct? It's it's above, it's right, 50 feet is right at the edge. If they go over 50, okay. they, they need it, so. All right, so we're under under that. Yeah. Okay. But and how so about the... I have um, My I feeling, Lee, is that we shouldn't charge the extra fee. 
Well, that's that's what I was thinking too, because all we're doing is modifying uh, the configuration, uh, same piece of property, same uh, same log, same everything. So yeah, and it's point. not. It didn't cost us any extra money. You haven't gone out and done anything. Well, the well is in now, but so you've been there, but that's not going to change. No, no, that's going to so, stay. So it looks like Colleen then will return his check. Okay. Dick, Lee, Bob is here. Are we all set? We are all set, Bob. And we're not, so we have, it's still approved, subject to the trench permit requirement, and uh, we're not going to charge the fee. Okay, Colleen, uh, when I pick up the, the signed paperwork tomorrow, if you still have Alan's check, uh, just include it in that paperwork, and I'll get it back to him tomorrow. Okay, that sounds okay. good. Good night. Okay, good night, thank, Bob. Good night. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Right, thank you. Next one is is Neil Jackson at 110 North Street, Lee. That, that's right at the corner of where Lyman Street comes into, into North. It's on the, the northeast side. It's a little house that's had the holes dug up around it for the last six or eight months. And oh, yeah. it's a it's a repair of existing three bedroom house. It's a complete system. The fee is is paid. They uh it's a cleared three quarter acre lot. It's kind of undulating, sloping down towards the wetland, the sands, it's got sands. With high water table, the wetlands are an issue in the back. Uh, the issues are the wetlands, the limited area for the leach field, the, the little bit of a slope, and the high water table. The design is for a 1,500-gallon two-compartment tank with an outlet filter. There are three three-foot by 40-feet trenches with a foot of effective depth. They're, I said they're terraced. They're not. They're not terraced. That's a a mistake. Uh, fill is is required on them. 444 gallons a day provided versus 440 required. He did provide reserve area between and adjacent to the trenches. He can have the five foot water table separation. Ballast is not required. The existing tank and the leach pits and will be pumped, crushed, and filled. He's provided a silter. Uh, siltration uh, barrier to protect the wetlands, the SAS and septic tank separation to the wetlands are more than the 50 feet that required by code. He could not get the 100 feet that we require, uh, which we waive if needed on, on repairs. Well separation to the tank and the SAS are greater than 100 feet. And uh, what I wanted to discuss, the trench permit, fill requirements, uh, conservation commission review requirement. And it, I, th I think it needs a plumbing permit because uh, there was a dry well before it looks like the washing machine that's gonna be eliminated. What are your thoughts, Lee? I don't see anything um, out of place. Um, on my copy, um, there's a mention of the neighbor's well um, and it's there's a something was over the numbers uh, from the neighbor's well to the SAS, and I'm guessing it's mine it's was totally. And Neil sent an electronic copy to us that I had trouble opening, but I did finally open it, and that number is 180. Oh, so we're way way over. Okay. Yes. Yep. All right, so the conservation has already met on this piece of property, I'm guessing. I don't know that. So I this would be one that we would we would require conservation commission review as part of our approval. Okay. Um now uh and on his note here, the existing well. His existing well is 70 feet from the new tank. It, that he made a mistake. He moved the tank um, and didn't change that note. That's a mistake on his note. If you look at the, the new drawing that he, oh, 
you maybe haven't seen the drawing. It showed up in my mailbox. But there's a new drawing that, in fact, Colleen, you we should put a note since since Neil maybe didn't send that to you either. That a revised drawing is required. But the the new uh, and he had some water table separation issues, Lee, that that he ended up correcting, and the tanks. He, draw, being... he did drop off some. Uh, he did drop off a, a revised copy. I don't know if this is another revision, but he did drop off, and he said he was dropping off to you. And I think he said he dropped it off to Lee also. You're not fucked up there. Yeah, the one, the one that I'm looking at is the one he dropped off to me, <laughs> um, and that's that's what I'm looking at, which I which is. What I just raised the question about that seventy foot separation from the tank. Yeah, the the note is still there, but if I'm trying to grab the the drawing, the uh, drawing, however, shows that it's more than a hundred feet. That he moved the tank and didn't and didn't change the note. Okay, okay. So we have a hundred feet plus from uh, that property on 110 North and 180 from the neighbors. So now, um, and you've got updated notes on the um, separation on that property from the SAS to the water table. Yeah, Colleen, so we should have on our approval that that note should be corrected. The note on the 70 foot well separation to the tank needs to be corrected to greater than 100 feet. Okay. Just looking for the, okay. the drawing. I, I don't see it. Please. Well, as long as, as long as uh, he sent it out, then we can get a copy of it um, and deal with it as, as the construction commences. Yeah, let me take, I did find it. Let me just, I'm looking right now. Yeah, the, the 100 foot line from the well kisses the, the northern boundary of the fill and the tank is beyond that northern boundary. So it, it shows that the tank's outside of the 100 feet. Uh, gotcha. Okay. Oh, but he does I, have, okay. but the, the note is incorrect. Neil's right, there. The note's there, but in fine print, there is, there's a couple dashes and in small print, it says 100 foot well radius. Yeah. So, so Neil, you have to, never, you have, well, Neil's no. on now, Lee. And Neil, you're okay. going to have to correct that 70 foot note on the North Street system to change it to the, it says 70 feet to the well and it's now over 100. Okay. Okay. Dry, your drawing is right. The notes are, are not. Okay. The next one we have is, is so Lee, are you approving that? Yes. Yep. I am too, Colleen. Okay. So the, so Neil, that's the approved subject of trench permit requirement, fill requirements, conservation commission review, and a plumbing permit. Already approved. Okay. And the next one is 19 okay. Forge Pond Road from, from Neil. Okay. Again. I think it's a little bit longer. Yeah. Case. And uh, we've got, it's a repair of a two bedroom house it's a complete system. The fee is paid. The review is complete. It's a little lot. It's a cleared one third acre lot. Well, it's fine. So you're all set now? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Now, who's got us making I'll this? Start. I'm going to shut that person off again. I don't know how they got back in, but I'm going to mute them. That person, uh, I think it's the same person. They must have called back in and got unmuted. But unfortunately, they don't respect our meeting. They can listen, but they can't. I was up. invited. Well, 
that you can be invited, but you have to be quiet. Okay. Until, I'm gonna until just... you're recognized. So, so what we've got on this system is, uh, it's a. Let's get back. the The review is complete. Uh, issues are the wetlands. There's not a well. Extremely li extremely limited area for the SAS high water table. Uh, insufficient area for trenches. The design is for a 1500 gallon two compartment tank with outlet filter, 1000 gallon pump and pump chamber, 13 by 21 foot bed with 15 Elgin B43 modules. The SAS is vented, fill is required, 330 gallons a day are provided for versus 330 required. A four foot retaining wall with 40 mil polyethylene barrier around the complete SAS. A deed restriction is required on the drawing for the two bedroom dwelling. If you've got a five foot water table separation, ballast is required for the septic tank and the pump chamber. The existing cesspool is to be pumped, crushed and filled. It is a cesspool that's there. Siltation barrier is specified as required. Uh, the SAS and septic tank separation to the wetland is more than the 50 feet that the state requires. Not our, again, not our 100 feet, but uh, as I said, we, we allow this on repairs where you can't get the 100 feet. The well is more than 100 feet from the SAS, the septic tank and the pump chamber. Uh, there is a shallow well at 20 Wood Forge Pond Road which is 103 feet from the SAS and approximately 80 feet to the, the septic tank, the new septic tank, which code allows 50 feet versus our 100 feet that, that we require, but can vary for a repair. Discuss the trench permit, fill requirement, uh, con con conservation commission approval, electrical permit, and this design is uh, stamped by a PE, so the the uh, wall does have the PE stamp on it. Lee, what are your your thoughts on this? Um, two cool, two questions. Um, um, okay, so for the proposed well, does the well have to go in first? and make sure that we have um, potable water before the system can start, or how does that work here? I think I think we should require it as, as part of this approval to say that the construction on this, if you think so, but, but on other cases, we have required that the well goes in first before the system is constructed, because you, as you point out, maybe you don't get good water and uh, we shouldn't make this repair at all, or maybe they don't put the well in ever. Yeah, okay, so let's get, go that way. My, and it, I guess the second question is, um, and maybe, I don't know who's uh, running the job, but um, because it's such a limited, location and such potential difficulty on the install uh, do we know or do we have any idea who will be bidding on this in other words this this is not a this is not a system for somebody who's got you know one or two under the belt on this one neil can you answer that question i believe uh um complete septic is is doing the job Jason um, LaFleur, about not, clean, not clean septic, complete septic. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah, Polly, so this one, be, so Lee, so start, you're approving start, that? Well. You're a, a yes. approving that? But Colleen, this is the, that the system construction permit will not be approved. So the design is approved, but the issuance of the the 
the uh, permit to install it won't be issued until after the well is installed. Until after the well is installed? Okay. Right. Yeah, we so have to we've make got sure that, that one is going to be subject to a, a trench permit, fill requirement, uh, conservation commission approval, and an electrical permit. And, and conservation again has already approved this. Okay. It's gone through Concom. Okay. In the well installed. All right. Lee, I suggest that we not discuss the Lion Street one or the or the Cedar Drive one since the reviews aren't completed. All right. Done. Okay. So those are done, Colleen. Okay. Uh, we've got. I don't know that Lynn is, is on board yet, but uh, we'll keep going then. Uh, about Colleen's time sheet, Lee, that's, that's a standard 70 hour for the two weeks. Are you okay with that? Yes, thank you. Colleen, that's approved. I am also. Okay. okay. The, the next one is uh, we are going. We have got the payments to the treasurer, and its totals this this time four thousand five hundred twenty dollars. That comes from two thousand six hundred ten dollars for board of health permits, one thousand three hundred sixty dollars uh, licenses. $550 for Board of Health fees, and that's it. That totals of $4,520. Are you okay with that, Lee? Yes. Yes, thank you. I, I am too, Colleen. Okay. Uh, the next one is pay, uh, bills payable. We've got the medical waste pickup on... 12.23 to 11.24 for this. That's going to be $840. That's the stereocycle. Fred Marion's got a couple bills in. One is a plumbing inspection for $1,190. And then his mileage for $56, totaling $2,086. Are you okay, okay. with those? I I am two calling, yeah. so that those are yeah. all approved. Okay. Next one is purchasing requests, Colleen, from for Quill. That's from you. Uh, yeah. It totals one hundred sixty-seven dollars and sixty-six cents. Uh, a receipt book for ten dollars and ninety-seven seventy-nine cents. Brother drum unit for printer $142.99. Dry eraser markers $6.99. Triple A batteries $6.89, totaling the $167.66. Are you okay with that, Lee? Yes. Uh, the next one that I have is. Colleen, if I skip something, please jump in. Okay. This one is a certificate of compliance for 95 Cold Hill. Um, it looks like this is a D box. Are we set with that, Lee? Yes, that that is in fact been replaced. Okay. All right. So you're okay with that? Yep. Yes. And I am too, Colleen, so that's approved. Okay. Next one is a septic system at Four Pine Brook Circle. Are we, that was designed by Neil. And uh, are we set with that, Lee? Yeah. It's all by okay. Colleen, I'm okay with that too, so that's, okay. that's approved. Okay. The next one and is that complete system at 291 East State Street. Uh, Lee, that's one that that uh, 
I don't know what the outcome was, but that was something that that during the installation they hit rock too soon. Is that is that what happened, Lee? Um, I've got to look this address up. I don't oh, this is the a... this is the Tim Droz thing. That's the the house right coming out of Taylor Street. Oh, on the north okay. end. So, uh, gotcha. I got you. Yeah. Um, according to Jason from Complete Septic, he met Jill Caffarelli on site, and um, the elevations were what she had specked out. And um, she said that everything was as it should be. Okay. The so, you, so are you okay with this? Yes. And I am too, Colleen. We got to okay. put it in our notes. They they went through so much. The owner, the Tim Droughts, went through a lot of work to get this thing done. And when you drive by that house, he really did a great job. He, he added a lot of value to that from that junky old White House that was abandoned for so long. And if you look at it, the wall he put in front and the, the way he finished it, it's a really good job. So yeah, it, it really it really did come out good. It really did. So the next one I have, and I, I don't see Lynn, are you with us right yet? Yeah, I, I called in. Okay. Then uh we don't have a lot for you. How are you doing? Nothing much. <laughs> so I just, I just want to say hi. I just, you know, um, I haven't done much in the, in the town so far. Yeah. So there's I'm just kind of waiting. Yeah. There are a bunch of things that we're going to prove tonight that you'll be okay. getting their food service things that, that you'll be getting now to, to get out and, and take the first look at. So, so you'll Good. start okay. working and I see that Colleen sent out the letter that we asked to, so you at least have something in in your files that say you're allowed I, to to get yeah. bill for the way we agreed to have you bill. I didn't send it okay. to Lynn yet. I just oh. wanted to make sure oh. that it, there wasn't anything else that you needed in the letter. But as soon as you okay that, I'll send it to Lynn. Yeah. Lee, uh -oh. are you okay with that letter as long as we've got Lynn? Yeah, I think everything's fine. We should be good all the way around. And I am too, Colleen. So that Lynn, you okay. don't have it yet, but it's the same. It's what we agreed to. Okay, sounds good. So if you don't have anything, we're gonna keep moving because Lee's gonna yeah. leave yep. us. You... We gotta shut down at eight o'clock tonight. Sounds good. I just yep. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> have a good night. Okay, you too. Thanks, right. Thanks for visiting. All right, bye. Okay, no bye. problem. Okay, bye. 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 So the, the next one that, that I have is a certificate of compliance for Linda Catinos at 140 Pleasant Street. And that's a, a new system. Uh, Lee, are we set with that? Yes, I, I did the final Saturday afternoon. Greg Harrison put that in. It's all cleaned up. Okay. So I'm okay with that too, Colleen. So you can sign off on that. Okay. Uh, the next one is a certificate of compliance. It must be D box for yeah, D box one forty seven. One forty seven Carver. Are we set with that, Lee? We are. Yes. Hey, Colleen, I am with that too. So that's approved. Okay. Now we'll see if we can go through some of these. Uh, Harry Martinez, Martinez Pizza, DBA Pizza Palace. Uh, it's a food establishment permit. Are we set with that, Lee? Yes. Yes. Yeah, this one's going to be, Colleen, all of these, so we don't have to go through them again, all of these yeah. food service or food uh, related uh, things that we approve will be subject to when inspecting them and then giving them out after we've approved them. Okay. okay? And the, so I, the, I won't do, the, I, I won't 
say it unless there's a reason that it's different. Okay. So, and she's got to go to the retail food, the ones that have retail food like Granby Grain. Right. Okay. Yep. And yeah, she has as to well sure, as the sure. establishments. She has to, right. She yep. has to make sure that the refrigerator is, is good. And yeah, so that, that's what so, I thought. Okay. So Pizza Palace is approved. Yep. Next okay. one is the same for May's Pizzeria and uh, 56 West State Street. Are we good with that, Lee? Yep. Yes. Allie and I am too. Okay. Next one is uh, the food license, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Men's and Women's Club, 256 State Street. Uh, again, a food license. Old church and special events. Are we set with that, Lee? Yes, all good. I am too, Colleen. Okay. Next one is uh, there are going to be four of them here. That's AAH Corp doing business as Dunkin' Donuts at 77 West State Street. And the permits are a license to sell retail food, license to sell milk and cream, a license to do frozen desserts and their ice cream. And the last one is operate a food establishment. Are we okay with all of those, Lee? Okay. Yes, absolutely. Colleen, I am too. So that's, okay. those are all approved. Okay. Next one, there are two of. And this is to uh, Granby Grain. And one is retail foods the other is licensed to sell milk and cream are you okay with those lee both of those yes i am too colleen so they're both approved okay the next one is we're gonna we're gonna have to, this one is center center pharmacy and I, if if we had to do this then Lee would be allowed because it had to be done. This one doesn't have to be done. We can wait till the next meeting to do this one because Lee's in conflict with this. Yep, yep, okay. So why don't we yep. defer this to the next meeting when Bill was here? Okay. The next one is Tom Halleck, Halleck Water Contracting. This is a a renewal and it's a disposal works installers permit. Are we set with that? Yes. I am too, Colleen. So that's okay. Yeah. The next one is another renewal, just uh disposal works installers permit. Uh Gary Pasquini of Gary's construction company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am too, Colleen, so that's approved. Okay. The next one is Sonomino, uh, another uh, renewal, uh, Sonomino Construction, Robert Sonomino. Uh, are you okay with that, Lee? Oh, yeah. Yep. I am too, Colleen, so that's okay. okay. Yep. The next one is Keith Bradway, and it's also an installer's permit and renewal. KWB construction. Are you okay with that, Lee? I am, yes, thank you. I am too, Colleen, so that's approved. Okay. Here, here are two of them for Joshua Fugler, Fugler Excavating. One is for a disposal works installer's permit. The other one's for a hauler's permit, re renewals. Are you okay with that, Lee? With those, with both of them. Yep, yes. I am too, Colleen, so they're both. Okay, yep. The next one is also two of them for River Drive Excavating. It's a disposal works installer's permit and a hauler's permit. Are you okay with both of those, Lee? I am. And I am too, Colleen. They're both. Okay. Of them. Next one is there are two also uh, different names, but it's Everson Construction, Greg Everson, and that is a, a this. Disposal works installers permit. Then the septics permit is Granby Septic Service Greg Everson. So they're they're two different 
names on the so. permits, but are you okay with both of those, Lee? Yes, yes. I am too, Colleen, so they're both okay. approved. All right. The next one is, and I have a, a question on this one. This is uh, Parker's Portables, Candace Parker, and this is a hauler's permit. Is is this a renewal, Colin, yes. or is it brand new? Oh, it's a renewal. Oh no, yeah, no, they've gotten it every year for quite a, quite a while. Yes, it's okay. Are renewal. you okay with that one, Lee? Yes, thank you. I am too, there, Colin. Okay, that's a, so that's approved. Another yeah. Hollard's permit. This is for Michael Linton of Link Linton Septic Inc. I think it did that used to be Barry Linton. Yes. Mm -hmm. But this is Michael. So. This this must be his son. I'm thinking, but yeah. So this is this is a renewal. Are are you okay with this, Lee? Yep. Yes. Thank you. I am too, Colleen. So that's approved. Okay. And next one is Ramby Motel, and this is a, a license to operate a recreational camp, the overnight camp. Or cabins, hotel, and trailer coach park. That's a, a renewal for Granby Motel. Are you okay with that, Lee? Yes, thank you. I am too, Colin. So that's okay. Great. The next one is a mobile food server for school sporting events, Granby Booster Club at 385 East State Street. That's a renewal. Are you okay with that, Lee? Yes. I am too, Colleen, so that's approved. Okay. Next one is a is two. It's Carl's site work. The first one is disposal works installers permit. The second is a hauler's permit. Are you okay with that those renewals, both of those leave? Yes, I am. I am too, so they're both approved, Colleen. Okay. The next one is a building department sign off for 46 North Street. We've already signed off on the septic system. This one, they submitted a well permit and it passed. The bacterial test was negative. All of the chemicals were negative except iron, which is not a, that's a recommendation one. And the iron uh, number was the maximum suggested level is 0 0.300 uh, parts per million. And they had 0 0.013. So it's a little tiny bit higher than the recommendation, but that's not a, that's not a mandatory number. So I think we're safe to sign off on both water and we've we've already approved the septic. So are we set to yeah. let Colleen sign off on both of those? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yep. And I agree too, Colleen. So those sign off on both of those. Okay. Uh, next one. Got two title fives. One is is Neil Jackson uh, passes at 147 Carver Street. Uh, are you okay with that one, Lee? Yeah, that's the one that we just did the uh, deep box replacement. Right. Yep. Right. Oh, yep. so, Colleen, that we can accept that one. The second one is 11 Griswold Circle. Uh, Neil has signed off uh, or, or submitted saying conditionally passes. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure how he could send it through unless you went back in, Lee, but but that one is got the waiting new no tag. water table has been determined and it's a thousand gallon septic tank. Right. So we know that that it the septic tank has to be has to be replaced and and without doing a water table test, I don't understand how it can be a conditional pass. 
because you don't know that it's not even in the it could be in the water for all we know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if the plan is to uh get someone a board member there um prior to the tank being replaced to a depot and make that determination. And then once that's done, perhaps go right into uh tank replacement. I didn't get any word about yeah the procedure so so my suggestion is that we send a note saying out as that as a result of the title five inspection the uh the tank is is below our standard below the size of our our minimum of 1500 so the tank has to be replaced and because the inspection did not show that the bottom of the the leaching facility was at least three feet above the water table, it must also be replaced. And then they Correct. can come they can come in and do something about it. If it if is that the yeah. way you want to handle it, Lee? I think that's that's the only way we can at this point. Okay. The I did uh, before we move on, on 2 Barton Street, Colleen sent out an email saying that the owner of that property, which which uh, had a 42-inch water table with a, with a leach field that's close to it, was saying they couldn't move forward because clean septic didn't get back to them. And I told Colleen that really... Clean Septic did their job and that they said that's a 42 inch water table, which means that they that she needs to get an engineer to do a burp test and a and a septic design to replace to replace the septic system. Yeah, the only goofy thing about that is that I believe they were just running off of data they received from the uh firm that installed the system originally. Yeah, but um, as it turns out, that's, I guess if Clean Septic doesn't want to put their name and say that's what the water table is, then they shouldn't send it in, right? Well, that's my thought. And I, I, I made mention that possibly they could uh, come back and um, dig a hole and complete the exam, uh, but I don't believe that's going to happen at this point in time. Um, I made mention to the owner that uh, perhaps it would be in everyone's best interest going forward to obtain a list from Colleen of who could perform this task because it yeah. may, we don't know at this point in time whether or not. Um, an imminent failure or whether or not it passes by definition. Yeah, but but clean septic has a license to send in that form that said it's 41 inches in their opinion, right? And if that's correct. So that's the document of record. And if the owner wants to get somebody else, this they can do that. But the board has said we've been told it's 41 inches and it's too close, right? Yes. Now, and maybe when they get the engineer or sanitarian to go do the water table and the, the perk test, they'll say, oh, the water table is really eight feet. You're all set. But but clean septic. Yeah, until they dig the hole, we don't know. No, but well, we do know what clean septic, who has a right to send it in, right? The owner yes. hired Clean Septic to tell us that 41 inches is the right number. Now, if they're wrong, that's them. But its yes. I don't think it's up to us to chase Clean Septic. It's a, we base our decision no. on what, what that licensed person tells us, right? Well, that, that's correct. They, they did a... Title five, in their opinion, um, 
they gave us a water table uh, without doing a lot of um, potential value um, exploration on that piece of property, but they didn't. Now we have to go forward and get some who will. Well, well, we just order that says you're too close. And then the owner can decide how they want to handle it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we just need someone to provide us different documentation other than what we've got now, because what we've got now tells us that the system is in groundwater and therefore will not pass our current requirements. Yeah, but we don't need them to give different numbers, right? What we've got is something that says it's too close. So ours yep. is to say, hire an engineer or sanitarian, do the perk test, do the design. And when they do that step, they may get different numbers. They may find out it's actually higher. Who knows what they're going to find out? But but Agreed. I don't yeah. I don't think the board is saying, yeah, we're sitting back knowing that this is a a deeper water table. Are you are you have you told anybody saying that that's a wrong number? No. No. We don't have any documentation to know that the forty one inch number is uh incorrect. Oh. No. So, so anyways, we if the the next things we've got. Let's see, we're we're at seven thirty, so we definitely have to be careful. Um, you're the the first the first item. In fact, maybe we had to cover the the first issue. Should be the health inspector letter for an employment that is that the letter you were talking about colleen or that yes or, but yeah. we also probably maybe at the beginning of that letter we say that that the letter serves as a notice to the lynn that she has been appointed as our our health inspector for food. What are, are we going to say for non-septic inspections? Non-septic related inspections. What are what are you looking at, Lee? I'm trying not to make it specific, but we certainly know. To maybe you say to do such inspections as as restaurants and food restaurants, food service establishment, uh, housing, uh, housing, mobile food, um, food trucks or whatever you call them. Yeah, swimming pools. So we'll call it non say non septic related inspections including items such as, and then have, have those listed. Okay. Okay, that sounds so good. Any, anybody in towns who sells food um, would be included. Any church, any outside. Uh, uh, um, camps I'm guessing would the be. the winery sells food. Yeah. I don't know what they have. Any food establishment. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. camps, camps should be on the list. And camps, yep, camps, pool, the motel, which would come under. Yeah, we say such as, but not limited to. Okay, we'll put it that way. And and uh, which yeah. is good idea. Two. Okay. So that gets that going. Sure. Yep. Okay. We are in a. We're in a spot, but the first item that we've got after that is alphabet soup. And that's the request for a letter regarding bottled, the use of bottled water for drinking. Uh, Lee, that's the one that you said is that you're 
in potential conflict. I agree, you probably are in conflict. Uh, so, Colleen, are, are we in a position that she can't keep her license until unless we do something? That's the way it sounded to me. Now, I sent her the link. She asked for it. She said, and I said, I, it would be to her benefit to come on to the meeting tonight. And I sent her the link, you know, like in case there were questions. Um, but she she hasn't logged on so i don't know um that's the way it sounded to me like she's trying to get her license renewed and this is kind of holding things up so i i'm thinking she needs it by the end of the year but i i i don't really know for sure if she needs it by the end of the year then we can wait until the next meeting well the next meeting it's January 2nd, right? Oh, that's right. So she can't. Um, yeah. I was thinking the 16th, but that's because I was doing January 16th. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, yeah. So, Lee, my, my suggestion of if we're in a spot that you have to act, then... A way that that you can you could avoid, I think any any problem would be to it to ex just extend what we're doing, not make a, a decision. Otherwise, you could say that you were deferring the decision, and all that was would do would be to allow what's going on to continue. So you wouldn't be part of a decision to, to shut her down immediately or to let her go on forever. But what would, if we just said, we're gonna send that a letter out and say, this letter is in effect until the 31st of March of next year. So that would give her three months and we, we won't put any conditions on it or anything. It, it won't be anything. It's just right. three months. That way. And, and I think that's as, as fair as we can be. The business will obviously continue to run and between them and now obviously the next meeting or two, Bill will be on board. And it hasn't put anything. Yours, you're not you're not doing anything. You're not taking anything to no, change I'm not, the, I'm not the taking there's no sides of or arguing. It's just with just a deferral of a decision. To stop her from going out of business. Yep. Before so our you, next meeting. Okay. So there'll be an extension to the use for the bottled water. Till Until March the 31st. 31st of March. So that gives okay. her three months. Okay. And then we can we can have Bill involved. Yeah. So so that way Lee, even though Lee is in conflict, he's yeah. not part of a any decision on what happens to the business other than to not shut it down. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. So Thanks. we'll do that. Okay. The next one that, that we've got, and I see Alan is is here. Lee, that this involves the the sign off on the building permit for uh I I'm gonna say it's it's 19 Forge Pond Road, but I'm not positive. 51. Do you know what it is, Alan? 51, I'm sorry. 51. 50, 51. Yeah, 51. So that the issue that I we've got is we've get Lee, we gave several conditions, I'll say six months ago. And and it involved uh, the design of the septic system, conservation commission. Uh, one of them was 
that the well, in fact, you brought it up, that you were concerned that the well could have been contaminated during the wait, during the fire, during any number of things. And we said at the time that we needed proof that the well was was good. And in fact, we required that a licensed well man make that determination. We did get what I thought was a shaky statement about the well from the, the well person. It was less than, I say shaky, less than fully definitive on as to the adequacy of the seal of the well. And and we're at a point now that, that the engineer, Alan, tells us that the owner is in danger of losing his right to continue in a replacement of a burned building that was torn down. And uh, if the board doesn't sign off on the, the building permit, what has come up is that apparently it, it is the, the well ended up not passing the bacteria test. And the, it's found out that the well in the past operation before the fire was well, no not the well the water in the house had to be treated for bacterial uh, contamination and uh, have to be careful and in, in my view in fact a discussion I had with Alan to make the assumption that the cause of the bacteria, in the old house, in the water in the old house, and the bacteria in the existing well are the same, is done without adequate evidence. So we are at a point right now that the well does not pass a bacteria test. And we have to decide as a board whether we're going to sign off on the building permit. My, my feeling, as I kicked it around some more in my mind, is that I, I'm still not convinced that the two contaminations are the same. And we, we on other wells that end up with, with bacteria contamination, we let the decontamination process pan out and decide whether the well has been a source of the contamination is found and killed and and uh, the well gets back into service as being a, a, a safe well. My my feeling, Lee, on, on this one, since we said from the beginning, is that that well needed to be a good well that post-treatment for bacterial contamination, I don't accept as being a good well. I I would be saying to, to let things move along though, I would say let the decontamination process continue, have the board sign off since there's a well there. And if the decontamination doesn't work, they have to put a new well in that I I wouldn't accept that post treatment for a bacterial contamination is accepted. But but I would sign off on the on the building permit. What are your thinking, please? Um given the scenario I can fully support um this concept. Um, my only request, I guess, is that some water person, company, whatever, make a fairly quick determination, I mean, within 30, 40 days, that the water is, in fact, treatable um, prior to the 
framing process of the house began because I mean, I don't know what the financials are. It's not on my business. But if we can't get good drinking water from that existing well, the new well has to be put in place. I don't know if that's the deal breaker or not financially. It's not on my business. Uh, but the water's got to be um, primary concern. But I, I don't want to stop anyone from pursuing uh, this location to build on. Uh, but, yeah, the water has been a problem from day one. And we have to know that for the current owner and future owners, uh, it, that it's not a problem. So somebody has to, uh, again, uh, verify they can identify what's wrong what's wrong and that would require some type of a uh, possible future contract as far as upkeep maintenance maybe power whatever to keep this thing going what we could do is let Alan the engineer yeah. know that it's the intent of the board that uh, if the water isn't resolved before the the house gets starts to get built, we're going to go to the building inspector and say we're we're rescinding our approval. If everybody knows that, so we sign off. There's no problem other than everybody knows this has to be dealt with and get it done. Alan, what is your, so it's clear we don't want to stop your client from moving forward and getting the building done, but we don't want that to happen. Thank you. Um, I'm going to apologize. I'm a little bit late for personal reasons. That's fine. Uh, my brother called from out of town and I had to speak with him and I myself will be at his commission and you sh I'm just letting you know this is a side note. In about three, four weeks, it looks like I'm going to have disc surgery, four discs on my back. So <laughs> that oh. yeah, won't be fun. But I, I was at Bay State for many hours today. So mm -hmm. going forward, um, I think we're all in the same channel here. There was a letter sent to all of you from the owner. I don't know if you got a chance to read it, but they're saying exactly the same as what you're asking. Um, I believe, which is to treat the well um, and uh, to re-sample re it. Um, option one would be to then um, add IR as it already had in the past. And you folks, I think we're part of that discussion, as I'm told. Um, and we to, said, no, we're not going to allow that. Okay. And then the following step would be obviously um, a well that is potable to get this to happen. I think I had the conversation with the homeowner and her partner um, that, you know, the, I think everyone involved here wants a potable well, wants a well, wants a well without bacteria. And so we're all on the same page. Uh, 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 I think we all see the risk. And I think we're all also uh, proposing to get to the same end goal. Yeah. Okay, so so as long as we all know that if the owner doesn't go along with what we're saying, is that's to get the well, get a good source of water without post treatment for bacteria. Mm -hmm. Now you certainly could get into some of the chemical post treatment that would be needed. That's that's possible, but but in terms of bacteria, we're gonna stop stop this project. So they need to they need to move forward with that. I think I think all of that is understood that the risk is is present, and um, they want to move forward as we've discussed. Okay, okay. Lee. So so it. It sounds like 
what we've just, we're going to tell Colleen that she can sign off on the building permit in terms of septic and water. But that the board has said that it's not going to allow post treatment on this well for bacterial contamination. So either they either they fix this source and eliminate it, or they end up having to put a new well. And all should know that that needs to be done before work begins on the construction part of the house. Otherwise, the board is going to rescind its approval. I just want to ask, I don't know if the owner is present, but if they may are, they may want to speak. I don't see though, Alan, I, it's okay. only the four of us that are on right now. Okay, I can't, I can't see that here. So that being said, uh, can I just throw in my two cents and have that letter obviously on record, but also CC to the building department. So everybody's on board from day one. I guess, I guess those, the notes from the minutes of the meeting would go to the building inspector. They won't be able to go I mean, there. I yeah, I don't anticipate any misunderstanding. Um, and I'm sure, you know, we're all trying to work. Alan, you, me, uh, whoever is going to be doing the water is going to be trying to work towards the same goal. Um, but, you know, it's, been, it's a, and I'm sure Alan is, you know, aware more than you and me are of all the time and effort into this thing. And the well keeps coming up. Um, it's just, it's just, it's the deal breaker here. The only thing I feel good about is that there should be no reason if we have to put a new well in, if they have to put it in, that the well can't be done. And in fact, they, there are ways to put a smaller diameter well and another seal down lower that... I'm not sure that's cheaper than putting in a new a new well, but I don't know either. Yeah. But that would be between the owner and the, the well people. Yep. So that way their project keeps going. Alan and and uh, basically they try to clean it up, and if they don't clean it up, our our feeling is that that or mine is that once you put post treatment in for bacterial stuff, it's not the same as saying, gee, my my water softener didn't work right. I ran out of salt and I've got some hard water in my system and I have to flush it out. Now, who's the one that, that makes sure that the UV bulb is working right and do water tests? And then what happens if the they do in fact have a, something, a fuse or a, a circuit breaker blows, and even though they've got backup power, now they don't have power to that that unit, and now you've got a contaminated water system, and how do you, how do you decontaminate? It's a mess. So the answer is put a good well in, which we said from day one when the Board of Health was involved. So it's not a surprise from the Board of Health. So, so that's where we are, Colleen. That's what we agreed, Lee, and I agreed to. Okay. Mm -hmm. As it turns out, that's what we're saying. But with the other member here and a different group of facts that um, a month from now, there's nothing that stops another discussion from occurring. 
Helen, I hope that you're you do okay. I, I hope it's I hope they're low on your back. Um, be honest with you, I've never had so much as a wisdom tooth out. So this will be a new experience for me. Yeah. 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 Um, I hope luck. it all out pretty clear to me that if I don't take action, it could call, cause long term nerve damage that I'm not interested in. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So good luck and uh, <laughs> happy holidays to you guys. Thanks. Yeah. That's good right. Night. You're good in you're in the talent. you're halfway we, through yours. You're a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Good night. Good night. Take good night. care, Alan. Thank Take you. Take care. Yeah. Good night. I suggest that that we've got the other items that that we have we probably should be with with the three of us. Uh, I had an, an interesting plea for for you to think about that sure. that in terms of Dollar General because you're we're a couple minutes before you have to leave, but I'm thinking of going to the Dollar General and say, you know, we've been through this. Each one of these these uh, bays, these ponds, is a health hazard. What the Board of Health knows is that the water, the level of the four bay or whatever they call it, is too low, so it can't ever drain out into the into the second section. We do know that they've put in a land drain that that does the machine shop and the the land you know to the south of the dollar general that goes into the the pre the four bay we know that we do know that the that to stop flooding that an overflow was put into the storm drain for the 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 state we do know that at the time of the original purpose the water table in the area of the second uh, basin was higher than the what the, the bottom of the basin. So we know those things. And that the the fact that the code says 48 hours after the the end of a rain, they're supposed to be dry. And what we're ordering them is to do what they need to do to pump them out and have them dry at the end of 48 hours. And every day of violation shall be a thousand dollars for each basin, and start whacking them away at, at two thousand dollars a day. And maybe they'll think about fixing it. Hopefully, but we don't have to say you need an engineering solution. We just say you need two pumps and pump them out, and they could they could pump them into that catch basin. And I believe it's been a while, but I believe that was the original agreement. Yeah. That they would be, as you said, forty-eight hours. Uh, you're down to you're down to a dry area. Right, and that's what the code. And I don't think we've never seen that. No, so we just say, you know, that's how you do it. You do what you have to do to make it comply with that regulation, and and instead of saying you have to do engineering fixes, you say just. You need a big pump and pump it out. Yeah, that works too. Yeah, and just say, that's it. Do the way you want to do it after that. But for right now, that's what you have to do. It's measurable. It's achievable. And just, you know, when Lee, when the bill comes back, we can talk about it. But I thought about it and said, yeah, all this, you know, month-long stuff. You say, this is no big deal. You get some two pumps like the fire department uses to pump out basements and stick them in there and be done with it. Well, they're not going to be done with them for sure. But, but no, it'll uh, be ongoing, but it'll solve the problem right away. Yeah. And then they can figure out what they want to do. They're not going to like that, but, but uh, at least, and then the fines start to get expensive. Once you start, you know, looking at a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, they're probably going to say maybe we ought to fix this. Hopefully, yeah. I hope they they take the the olive branch and run with it. Yeah. So, 
But I suggest that it's eight o'clock. I think we should do have to leave, Lee, and we should shut everything down. What do you say? <laughs>